Hello everyone, Tim again here and today I have the pleasure of bringing you another one of my FIFA 14 tutorials. Now today's tutorial is a formation one and it's covering the second iteration of the 4-2-3-1 formation found in FIFA Ultimate Team. Now this iteration of the formation has two fullbacks, two centre backs, two central defensive midfielders, a right and a left mid, a central attacking midfielder and a striker. Now, 4-2-3-1-2 has to be one of my favourite formations in FIFA 14 Ultimate Team at the moment, and one of the main reasons for this is the tactical flexibility this particular layout gives you. Because you've got that nice solid back four, you're going to be pretty good on the defence, both from crosses coming from wide and attacks through the middle. The two central defensive midfielders reinforce this defensive position, whilst at the same time giving you a good opportunity to dominate the midfield and control a lot of possession. The two wingers give you plenty of width to enable you to get the ball wide, put crosses into the box and stretch your opponent's defence. The central attacking midfielder is in a very, very useful position in between the two lines of the defence in the midfield your opponent is likely to field and he can control the play and bring in the wingers and the central defensive midfielders to really control the tempo of your passing and as always the strikers up front to take all the glory. This combination of player roles gives you great flexibility to play as and when you would like. If you want to sit deep and hit them on the counter-attack, the fact that you've got two wingers enables you to do that, as you'll always have an out ball. If you like to control the play and have a lot of possession, those three players located in the central area of the pitch enable you to dominate the midfield against the vast majority of opponents. And if you're a regular crosser of the ball, the fact that you have two wingers, a central striker and a central attacking midfielder is very, very important. Important because your central attacking midfielder can spread the ball wide, the winger can take a fullback on and then the striker gets into the box, normally ably supported by at least one of the other midfield players or the winger heading in from the other side of the pitch. So this well-rounded attack definitely makes it a very, very applicable formation to a host of different teams and a host of different styles. Even better news is that the formation is very, very solid against pretty much every form of enemy attack. Because you've got that regular solid back four in position, as long as you don't get your fullbacks too far up the field, you're very, very set up to deal against a host of opposition attacking manoeuvres, whether it comes from the flank or through the middle. The fact that you have two central defensive midfielders sitting in front of the back four is very, very important as well. Because if you're under the cosh, if you're under pressure, you can go into your turtle shell. Just be very, very solid. And then, like I mentioned earlier, because of those attacking players, you can launch out and provide very, very devastating counter-attacks. This abundance of midfield players is also very important in defending against enemy counter-attacks because whilst the formation gives you plenty of options in attack, it isn't gunko by any stretch of the imagination. When you lose the ball, 99% of the time you're going to have at least one of those central defensive midfielders in behind the ball to slow up your opponent's attack, enabling you to either win the ball straight back there or at least slow your opponent down to get your players back into a defensive position. However, although 4-2-3-1-2 has many, many great attributes and is a very, very effective formation when used correctly, it does rely on several important positions being filled in an appropriate manner to be most effective. The two positions that immediately spring to mind are the striker and the central attacking midfielder. Like I've mentioned, most of the time you will have enough players up the pitch to be able to provide a threat. However, because you've only got one striker at field, he needs to be an all-round player in order to make this formation work. For example, in my own personal team, I use Roberto Soldado because he has great finishing stats, great technical stats, he's decent in the air and he's reasonably quick so he ticks a lot of boxes. I see some players in line do a one trick pony in this formation, either someone who's just a beast and someone who's good in the air or someone who's a whippet and very very quick. And in my opinion, this is not an effective way to get the most out of this formation. Like I've mentioned earlier in the tutorial, flexibility is the key attribute to using this formation correctly. And if you put a striker up front who's only good at one facet of the game, you are automatically limiting yourself to the ways that you can attack. There's no point just having a striker who's very, very quick and nothing else because you've got two wingers on the field. If you get the ball into a wide area and need to put it into the box and you have a four-foot striker who's incredibly quick but can't do anything else, you're immediately negating the impact of your wingers and the crosses they can provide. However, likewise, if you have a striker who's incredibly powerful and strong and great in the air but is technically inept and is very, very slow, you are negating the impact of the possession you can get in midfield and you're 
your central attacking midfielder as he won't be able to slot through balls through and this will enable your opponent to be a lot more attacking in the centre of the park, diving into challenges and putting a lot more pressure on those three midfielders you have in that area, which will reduce the amount of possession you have and limit the options you have in attack. In addition to this, a flexible central attacking midfielder is equally vital because he plays such a focal point in marshalling your attack, either spreading the ball wide to your wingers or getting in the area himself. Therefore, it's very, very important that he has both good passing stats and at the very least manageable finishing stats because whilst he is going to be providing a lot of the chances for your players because of his position and because of the fact you've only got one striker your central attacking midfield will find himself getting into the area and staying in there a lot of the time so you need him to be able to regularly convert chances to make the position worthwhile. Therefore, in summary, while 4-2-3-1 is a tremendous formation when used correctly, it definitely relies on picking important players in the key positions, players who are flexible and players that give you a multifaceted option in attack. Because whilst the formation itself offers flexibility, player choice is equally important to ensuring that your team can score goals in a variety of ways. And picking two one-sided and attacking option will undermine the key strength of this formation and leave it more vulnerable to other formations in the game. That little snippet of information is bringing the tutorial to an end, so I really hope you guys have enjoyed it and I hope you've learned a little bit more about the formation. 4-2-3-1-2 is one of my most favourite formations in FIFA, it's one that I have a very high success rate with and it's one that I enjoy playing with due to the flexibility it offers and the variety of ways you can score goals. If you have any more questions about the formation, don't hesitate to leave a comment and I will do my best to answer it. So once again, thank you so, so much for watching the video. I hope you've enjoyed it and as always, have a great day.